the irrefutable racism of America. I, I believe now we have gotten to the point where, you know, I don't think America can hide its racism anymore. I wrote this, I wrote the, if, if, if you are on my email list, you probably read uh, the essay I wrote today. And if you're not on my email list, it'll, it'll, the, the piece will come out on my website uh, in, a, in a day or two. I talked about just the, the various race forms of racism I faced over the course of uh, my, you know, my touring, the years of touring that I did. And a lot of people would give me shit because they'd be like, oh, well, you know, America is not that racist. It's just not that racist. I, I think you found some bad apples here and there, you know. Um, and I think it's becoming more and more irrefutable that America is racist, especially after the events of last week. Or was it last week or two weeks ago? January 6th. Whenever the, whenever the hell January 6th was. Um, and there's other events to kind of prove this as well. It's not just the events of January 6th. D.C., there was a, a, a Proud Boys rally in March where uh, people got attacked, they got beat, they got hit, they got stabbed. And there is a, there is a record that the Proud Boys will clash, and they will clash violently. That's what they do. It's been happening all across the country for the last four years, specifically, especially like Portland, Oregon. That seems to be like the hotbed of, um, of uh, fucking Proud Boy violence. In D.C., there was almost no Metro Police for a known violent group, which I'm not surprised by. Um, I read the Blue Leaks that kind of proves that sort of stuff. They kind of just leave. They work hand in hand with white supremacists. Look at Kyle Rittenhouse. That kid shot people, jogged lightly down the street with, with an assault rifle, and then the cops shielded him. And now he's pleading not guilty. You saw what happened at the Capitol riots last week. Cops let him in. Barely, barely any Capitol Police or Metro Police there. I believe the uh, Capitol Police Chief has resigned. National Guard didn't get called. And what did everybody, what was everybody saying? You know? It doesn't matter how early you said it or, or how late you said it, right? There's some politicians that came out two or three days later and they were like, oh, this was BLM. There would be, we'd be clearing up dead bodies. That's true. A shit ton of people were saying that. And we came to that conclusion because we have eyes. Uh, and, and then a couple weeks ago, um, I think about a month ago maybe, Oregon's capital was attacked by armed fucking right wingers that were against the um, the mandates that they were putting out there to wear masks and shit. Very little police presence there. They attacked a fucking journalist. Very little police presence there. You look at Black Lives Matter protests. You look at all of the other protests for. Uh, Medicare for all, right? Uh, to to get corruption out of office. I mean, the Capitol has hunt, like th protests every fucking day. When I lived in D.C., there was always somebody handing out a flyer for a protest to go to. And if I wasn't trying to survive in D.C. Uh, and trying to earn money, I would have probably gone <laughs> to some of those protests. But I, you know, it's just it's just a matter of affordability. That's that's what it was at that time for me. But these Black Lives Matter protests, I, I was at, I was the one of the early uh, defund the police protests that happened in Pittsburgh. I went and I saw these outside agitators, right, that, that may or may not have been cops. In fact, they were being escorted by cops. And I know I talked about this in a different video, but I'll, I'll recap some of it. But they were following us around. There were these two dudes on bikes, these two black dudes on bikes, and they just kept agitating people. Like they kept trying to ram people. And then we, and then was like, okay, maybe the cops are going to get rid of them. We'll see. 
I don't, you know, maybe the cops don't. I want to see what, how this plays out. And I saw how it played out. The cops escorted them a block away from the protests and then basically allowed them to loop back around and make a big circle and then follow the protest. So now they would have been in a different part of the protest. So, you know, maybe people won't get wise to what's going on. So my guess was they were undercovers or they were just hired by the police department to agitate people to the point of violence. The organizers of the protests were keeping things peaceful, gathering people up. If the crowd got a little out of hand, they had various people in various positions to co corral everybody back to the point and keep marching to where they were going. Cops were everywhere. Um, we also saw cars, old police cruisers, empty. Nobody was inside them. Right, so it's bait. It's bait to to get people to. This is how they treat Black Lives Matter protesters to turn them into violent insurgents. Right, that's what they always claim Black Lives Matter protesters are. As of now, two uh, Black Lives Matter protest leaders have been gunned down in Louisville. I talked about them about a month ago. Right, two leaders. There's maybe one or two stories about it in corporate media, and then no, and and then nobody talked about it. I want to keep bringing that up because these people were gunned down, and the cops and the cops' statement is there's not enough evidence to figure out what's going on. There's not enough evidence. What do you mean there's not enough evidence? That's crazy. So. There's there's now no there's no excuse to say that cops aren't racist. The criminal justice system isn't racist and America hasn't been built on a on a backbone of racism. In fact, let's let's look at this story real quick. Um, this is from Truth Out that talks about how gang laws are being used against Black Lives Matter. Uh, it says many states, the majority of them in the West and the South, have adopted gang laws similar to California Step Act, which enacted, which was enacted in 1988. This law outlawed the participation in criminal street gangs and codified heavy sentencing enhancements for gang-related convictions. In recent years, gang classifications and enforcement in states like California, Oregon, Illinois, and Maryland have been criticized by civil rights groups for fomenting unconstitutional and biased enforcement. In Los Angeles, a scandal involving LAPD's falsification of gang records for dozens of people resulted in the invalidation of one quarter of the entries in the statewide's Cal Gang database. Mike German, a former FBI agent who spent years infiltrating and investigating white supremacist group, told the appeal that there is no push by Trump, the Trump administration and Attorney General Bill Barr to frame racial justice protesters and their allies as domestic terrorism threat while alighting the increasing lethal activities of the extreme right. If you guys saw the, the Blue Leaks video I put out at the end of the year, um, it outlines some of this. And, and Mike German, the, the former FBI agent, is, is actually one of the people that talks about how uh, law enforcement just basically looks at some of these these protesters as domestic terrorists and treats them as such. So they're they're using old gang laws as a way to justify attacking protesters that are protesting what? They're protesting the fact that we don't want the cops to murder us. That's it. That's the whole that's the whole thing. Hey, if you think that I committed a crime, can you not murder me? Can you like figure out whether I committed the crime? That's the whole fucking basis of the argument. And they're being treated as a gang. The insurance—you know how long it took. Uh, every time, every time there's a there's a cop that gets away with murder, uh, which has happened every, for years and all all of last year. They always are like, "Well, we got to send the national guard to the city that this is happening in." I feel like that's an admission of guilt to be like, "Oh, people are going to be pissed, and if we send the national guard, maybe they won't rally around, right? Maybe we'll weaken their resolve or so on, something like that." And when they knew that the Capitol, and, and they knew, uh, the cops knew that the Capitol protests were going to happen, right? The Capitol riots were going to happen. 
not protest, my mistake for saying that. Uh, when they knew that was going to happen, they were like, send a couple of parking meters there, and well, who's the new guy? Send him there with a the taser, and he'll be fine. The National Guard is a response to killer cops getting away to let's send a couple of people to thousands of people that might march directly into the Capitol, which is exactly what they planned on doing, which is exactly what they did. There is no, there is no way you could refute the statement that America is racist anymore. There's no way. For years, I fucking faced that shit. For years, I faced that shit where people were like, oh, I think you're over-exaggerating about, uh, about a race problem in America, especially during the Obama administration. If I talk about race on stage, people would get mad at me about it because they didn't see it. They weren't looking at how cops were treating black and brown people versus white people. Nah, 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 we got a, we've got a black president. Racism is over. So, so now all of a sudden people are incredibly shocked by this, but a lot of us are sitting there going, yeah, no shit, man. This is what happens when you ignore racism in an entire country. You know? We now have irrefutable proof that America is racist. And we have a president who wants to give the the an, an institution perpetuating said racism the the, the police uh, who openly let a bunch of white supremacists into the capital and who openly attack black protesters with with signs and water bottles with military grade weapons where I, I was talking to my buddy Jason about this where he said uh, Tear gas is, is against the Geneva Convention, which means that Iraqi terrorists can't be gassed, but Black Lives Matter protesters can. What? <laughs> like, you can't make the argument. Joe Biden wants to give the police more money. To do what? Oh, sensitivity training. No, I think they can afford the sensitivity training with the how much money that they actually have. In fact, give them less money and let them figure out the sensitivity training for themselves. Yeah, maybe that's not a good idea. But they should be defunded. More money needs to go into social programs. Again, how do we help the mental health of this country so that we don't become desperate, destitute, so we believe strong men and repeat the cycle all over again? And right now we are we are we are back around to the top of the top of the circle so we can come back around to neo-fascism. But it's up to us, right? It's up to us to not support these institutions anymore, not to support these people, and to look through their lies and look through the veil um, of, of what's going on. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation 
or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.